Hey guys, Rebecca Loby here. In 2020, the whole music industry has pretty much paused for the last six months and gone completely online. And what that has meant for me as a full-time touring songwriter is that if I want to perform for people, I have to do it like this on camera in my house. So I have learned a ton. It's been like a crash course. My first live stream back in March was so bad. So since then I've been learning as much as I possibly can about performing on the internet. And I feel like there's a lot of information out there. So here we go. I'm going to give you my top 10 tips for performing on the internet. Ready? Let's dive in. I think it's important to ask yourself why you want to perform an online concert. I know it sounds kind of silly. I want to because I want to, but seriously, what's your priority? What's your main goal? Do you want to connect with the audience you already have? Do you want to expand your audience? Do you really need to figure out how to make online concerts work so that you can earn some money and cover your rent. These are important distinctions. I'm not saying it has to be one or the other, but as you're making decisions, I think it's helpful to know what the one most important thing is to you. So give it some thought. What is your top priority? And once you have that in your mind, we'll move on to consideration number two. Second thing is, you've got to make it fun for your audience. It's got to look good. It's got to sound good. I recently had the pleasure of talking to my friend Lex Land. She is a brilliant performer. She's so good. I go see her on my nights off when I'm home in Austin. But she also performs every Friday from her house for something she calls the Crooner Coffee Hour. She's a force and she's learned so much about live streaming and she's very generous with what she's learned. And I'm going to kick it over to her for this next tip. I think that an important part of what makes live streaming online like why it makes it work is that it's not, <laughs> when it's not a replication or an attempted replication of an actual concert. For me, in the beginning, uh, when I started doing this a few years ago, I tried a bunch of different things to see what worked and what worked the best was removing the microphone from being in between, really making it like you're with them in the room. Um, I had just my normal live performance mic and I just had it, I basically had it here, but then I would push it as far out of the frame as I could and I would just crank the gain um, and it sounded great. I've gotten a lot of feedback from audience members that they want to see my hands when I play guitar so this is what I do. Shh, don't tell anyone. I have this trash can. <laughs> it is a waste basket that I've had in my office for many years and I realized during the show one day that it's the perfect height for me to flip upside down, put it on the ground, put my leg up on the trash can, put the curve of my guitar on my thigh, boom. Now do I normally walk around playing my guitar up like this? No. but. I think that the benefit of an audience being able to see your hands completely outweighs like the weirdness of the posture of holding it like this. I think that it really makes a difference to people to be able to see. My next tip is you've got to make it fun for you. Your happiness matters. Your comfort matters. Why? Um, Because you're not a great actor. I don't know you very well, but you're probably not. And if you're not happy and comfortable and having fun, that's going to come through to your audience, even if you think you're really good at faking it. Probably not. <laughs> I had the immense pleasure of touring for several years with the singer-songwriter Ellis Paul. He is a legendary genius, has a 30-year career, incredible songwriter, and was a very generous mentor to me. He's been doing really great live shows for several years and was kind enough to stop by and share some of his wisdom, and I think he's dead on with his next tip, so check it out. Certainly the first thing is, is shit happens. Things are gonna go wrong. Because as a one man operation or one woman operation, you are the sound tech, you're the light person. You're making sure that everything is working and there's no technical things going wrong. And of course, every night, something is gonna happen that's gonna flip it entirely in the wrong direction emotionally. The best thing you can do is just say, ah, well shit happens, this is what it is. You're going to be distracted by all of these things happening at the same time. Oftentimes you're reading the feed of people making comments as you're playing and then suddenly you forget what you're singing and you start singing the words in the feed or whatever or the lighting is not right and you realize, wow, I'm really too bright. When did that light come on? And all these things that can go wrong will go wrong. 
you know, in a microcosm, it's it's how you deal with it. It's not the stuff that's going wrong that's the problem. It's you and how you're interacting with the problem emotionally. And just let, let the little shit go is what you got to do. There are tons of things to consider when you're putting together a live stream concert. And I think it's easy to get really focused on the technology. Like, oh, if I have a good camera, if I have lighting, then I'll have a good concert. Mm -mm. <laughs> It's important to figure out your best option for all the technical stuff, but that is not the end all be all to putting on a good online live stream concert. So with the technology, it's all about figuring out the best option that's available to you. So assess what you have. Is your best camera and your best microphone your cell phone? Maybe, the cell phones are getting pretty good these days. Do you have a PA system? Do you have any studio equipment? Do you have a slightly better camera? Do you have a webcam? All of these things can help you. Whatever gear you end up using, please make Make sure you're comfortable with it before you go live because if you're uncomfortable your audience will be uncomfortable <laughs> i promise okay next tip is to decide if you want to use broadcast software there are tons of options ranging from free to fairly expensive obs which is free Streamyard, zoom can put on really cool concerts what else crowdcast is a great option great audio great video on the more expensive side and they all have pros and cons OBS, which is free, felt when I first downloaded it a little intimidating technology wise. Pardon me if I sound real stupid here, but it looks like you're gonna need to be super tech savvy in order to make it work. But once I walked through it, it actually was pretty simple. So if you're interested in OBS, OBS is great because it multicasts to different platforms. So you can perform on Facebook and YouTube and Twitch. It also lets you put visuals up on the screen, which can be great. It lets you have guests on. So OBS would probably be a great place to start. Zoom, I think we're all pretty familiar familiar with Zoom at this point. Zoom is interesting because it is a meeting software. It's not really designed for music. And if you are going to use it for music, you want to go in and tinker in the audio settings. If you want something that's a super, super simple, like plug and play experience, I found StreamYard to be that for me. Costs a little bit of money and that might be a factor that you want to consider. It also lets you bring on guests. It also lets you have graphics on screen, which is great. It lets you record so you can save it for later. In fact, you don't even have to go live to record, which is really cool. You've got your audio equipment set up. You've picked your broadcast software. You absolutely must do a thorough sound check. I even recommend sound checking the day before the concert. You'll get a better night's sleep and you'll put on a better concert, I promise. It is so worth it to sound check the day before. If you can have a friend or somebody whose ears you trust listening to your sound check, that would be a bonus. All right. My next tip, and this is something that might help you in other areas besides just live stream concerts, is to get comfortable talking about money. Ugh, no one wants to talk about money, and I get it, it sucks. But if you are going to discuss money on your live stream, if you're selling tickets or if you are asking for tips, it is very important that you are comfortable doing that. And as cheesy as this might sound, practice. Figure out a few phrases that you're comfortable saying. You know, record yourself doing a fake live stream broadcast and just get comfortable mentioning money. And remember, people who are tuned in to see you perform a live stream concert, they are your supporters. They are your friends. They are your fans. They are on your team and they want you to succeed. So if what you need in order to succeed is to sell some CDs on this live stream or let people know that they can tip you through Venmo and PayPal, say it, say it with confidence, say it with joy. Because if you're able to talk about it with confidence and joy, that confidence and joy will absolutely translate to your audience. The asking for tips part while you're live streaming can be uncomfortable. The best advice I can give is do as much as you can to... <laughs> Do we have a visitor? It's my dog. He's just running around. Um, you can just do one of those hard edits there. Do as much as you can that's passive. Um, like I, for, on Facebook, I used a, a use a pinned comment or I'll flash a banner. That's a really good way to kind of get it in front of the eyeballs without having to constantly talk about it. The second thing I would say is figure out a way that makes sense for you and what you're doing and kind of get a script that you can live with and just use that. Um, and after a few times of saying it, it will become more natural. I'm at a point where my viewers know that they can tip and how to tip. So I have some notifications when that happens and by thanking them immediately, it indicates to the other people watching that that's a thing. I think that helps to sort of get 
other people to tip also. <laughs> There's this idea of reducing friction, okay? And so anything that you can do to reduce that friction is gonna make it a lot easier for them to follow through on the action you want them to, to follow through on. So I would really focus your energy on making sure there's a clear call to action and you are very clear on how to give them directions on, on getting them to take that action. Okay, two more tips, are you ready? <laughs> My ninth tip is that you've gotta promote the concert. People aren't just born knowing that you're playing a live stream next week. You've got to get the word out there. And if you are performing on Facebook, there are a few things you can do during and after the show to kind of keep the promo train rolling. Facebook tells you the first 10 seconds are the most important. I notice that the dis distribution of the video in total really hinges on the first 10 minutes of engagement. They gate it to a few people and then depending on what engagement it gets, it'll either share it to more people or it closes it. I'm sure you've seen that some of your streams just explode every once in a while they just explode and it's you don't you know it seems random and then sometimes there's a crowd there and stuff but it's not it just kind of plateaus and stays at one number for a while you know my final tip which is probably also being recommended in preschools across America is to use the buddy system. I strongly recommend finding a friend who will tune into your live stream and lightly moderate the chat. And whether that means that they are promoting your tip jar links or communicating with your audience or communicating with you, making sure that you're confident that it's sounding good in the audience, making sure that someone is laughing at your jokes, answering your questions, engaging, so that if there aren't a lot of people there, it can be really nice knowing that you have at least one person person who's going to be there with you. And if things do get really busy, it's great to have a dedicated person who can keep your links high in the chat, someone who can throw a relevant link into the comments, just generally engage with people who show up. It's totally worth it, trust me. One thing to consider if you're a musician doing a live stream, find another musician who might be willing to watch your live stream and act as a moderator, and then in exchange, you can watch theirs. Okay, that is it. My top 10 tips for playing a live stream concert in the year 2020. I hope it was helpful. I feel like I said a lot more than 10 things, but there is so much going on in live streaming right now. There's a lot to know. This by no means is a comprehensive video, but I hope it gets you started, gets you down the path a little bit. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I will definitely do my best to answer. And if I don't know the answer, I will point you in the direction where I think that answer might be. If you have any tips, please, I'm always learning. I would love to know anything that you have found valuable or helpful or useful with live streaming. Please let me know. I'm also going to link to a few of my favorite weekly live streams. Some musicians that I absolutely adore are playing really great live stream concerts right now and you can learn a lot just by tuning into them. And I'll also link to the technology that I'm using that helps me. My microphone, my lighting, my webcam, anything that I'm using that I think might be helpful to you, I'll put it all in the description. So make sure to check there. Let me know if you have any questions about any of that stuff. And lastly, if you enjoyed this video, please do consider subscribing to my channel. If you press subscribe and that little bell, ding, 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 um, that helps me. Actually, that tells YouTube that you like me and YouTube will share this video with more people. Click thumbs up on this video. And I think that's everything. Like, subscribe, thumbs up. Oh, leave a comment. Yes, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this video or if you have any questions about live streaming or if there is another topic you'd like to hear me dive into. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in and I hope to see you next time. Take care, bye. Record a YouTube video just very casually, just what I do. I sit at my house, I talk to a camera, there's no one else in here, it's just me and a camera and an adult woman talking to herself. Very normal behavior. I have to go turn off the air conditioner, I'll be right back. I cracked myself up.